When you travel the world for a year, you see and experience so much, and we want to share our daily travels with you. Unfortunately, a hard drive failure means we have to tell the middle a little bit differently. So, welcome to Storytime with the Happy Hoppies in this edition of The Lost Episodes. So in the last video, we were in Jerusalem and explored that, all the different sites there, that was awesome. Then we took the bus back to Tel Aviv to pick up our rental car. Yes, and so we are gonna talk about more of Israel in this episode um, and thinking about sunny Israel. Um, currently, if you hear some wind or crazy things like that, currently in Colorado, there is a blizzard happening. <laughs> So we're next to windows, so hopefully things don't come flying through. This is the best time we could film, so we're filming. <laughs> the rental car in Tel Aviv, when we got there and picked up the rental cars through Hertz, in, right outside of Tel Aviv, and the guys there were awesome, super friendly, a lot of fun. We had a great time, and the rental car was only like $27 for the rental. For like four days. Yeah, on Expedia. But there was like another fee. So with the other fee that Israel had, it was like brought up to 63, uh, but still really good for four days. Yes, and now in Israel, um, we were looking at other options, you know, of like public transit and all that, but just like waiting on that with a limited time we had, renting a car and seeing on our own was the best way to go, even though gas is around seven US dollars a gallon. Um, so they obviously sell it in liters, and then with the conversion rate and all that, it's about seven dollars a gallon so quite about insane <laughs> about the same price as the cost of gas in Norway <laughs> yes but still um, it was a definitely a, a savings to be able to do that and go at our own pace um, so that evening we drove about 30 minutes is what it was supposed to take but I think with traffic around um, evening time getting out of Tel Aviv um, it was maybe closer to like an hour um, we got to the town of Netyana Netyana I don't know how to say it, but that's where we ended up spending the evening uh, because at that point it was already dark. Um, we had just, you know, explored so much in the daytime in Jerusalem, and so um, we didn't want to drive any farther um, in the dark. And the hotel we booked through booking.com. Normally we do like to use Expedia if we can just because things tend to go a little bit more smoothly. Yep. With booking, you don't pay until you get there usually. So when we got there, found out that their credit card machine wasn't working or wasn't up yet because they were apparently just switching over the hotel To new ownership. management or yeah. something? Yeah, like management, the name, I think everything was like changing. So there's a lot of stuff kind of just in flux and so they didn't have their account activated yet for credit card processing. He was like, I can just take a picture of your card um, and then we can run it tomorrow when the system's back up. It was a little bit of a hassle. Um, it took about an hour to solve, but finally we paid for our room. At that time of night we would have had to drive to the ATM to get out the cash and we did not want to pay our cash because, anyways, it was, it was, and it was a good thing we didn't because later on in uh, couple other episodes you'll see we needed the cash <laughs> and so if we can use a credit card we try to use a credit card um, because we only had limited cash in our cash account anyways <laughs> yeah and then they actually did end up taking a picture of the card so I was thankful that I also had a couple cards with me so I gave him more of a backup card it yeah. wasn't our primary card that we use for everything else so just in case it got compromised and we had to cancel and get a new one it wasn't the main card that had all of our travel perks and like damage waiver for rental cars and stuff like that that we needed to have active. Yes. So good to have a burner card with you. <laughs> yeah, the things you need to think about when you are traveling and uh, thankfully the whole time we were traveling, we had no issues with any of our credit cards being compromised or all of that. Um, and usually in the States, we have it happen at least once a year, so. It happened again like <laughs> within like a month or two of being back too. Right. Crazy. But anyway, anyway enough we were, of that. Yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Long, long uh, detour. Okay, so then um, the next morning we woke up um, in our hotel and before we left, we wanted to go and explore the beach because we were right along the beach. So we went on down to the beach and there was this this old junky car that just kind of abandoned on the beach there. So I got a couple little pictures of that. Then went down to the beach. I think Lisa touched the water, dip her toes in it, since so she always liked, likes to touch the water. And listen, I don't necessarily need to get in the water, but I always want to touch the water. Then got in the car and headed on north up to 
Haifa, Haifa, I reset. Was it? Well, I think actually, hang on. Before we went to Haifa, we went, we stopped somewhere else along the way. Oh, uh, we did stop in, in no, um, Caesarea. Caesarea. In Caesarea, uh, didn't see a whole lot. There were like a couple ruins that we could kind of see through some fencing. Or... I think you could tour it, but it wasn't even open it, yet because we were so early. Right, and I think there was a fee or something, but yeah. at least it was like ass ah, ruins. Yeah. <laughs> let's go. We've seen ruins, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> so we continued on, went up the coast a little further, up to Haifa, Haifa, however you say it. And so the name of the gardens um, is the Hanging Gardens, and it's like terraces to the Baihai Faith, something like that. I think they do like free walking tours, but only at certain times of the day. And it was gonna be like at least an hour until the next tour. And we just had a lot we were gonna see that day. Um, and we could kind of see the gardens from where we were. So Peter just snapped a couple of shots and we were on our way. It was beautiful. It was. Very nicely landscaped, manicured. It was a cool little view up there. Yep. Then we went back to the car. So then we continued on and drove a, along the ridge took a couple pictures looking back, and that ridge that we were along is considered Mount Carmel. So one thing we learned while we were there is Mount Carmel isn't like just one little mount, right. mountain. It's actually like this whole ridge. So the funny thing is, is we put in Google Mount Carmel, and you know Google, it just takes us there, and it's like, you have arrived. And we look around, and we're in some neighborhood. Like We're like basically in someone's driveway. And I was like, this isn't right. So it's kind of a random spot that somebody apparently at one point yeah. tagged as Mount Carmel. Yeah. It was a pretty drive, it, it was, was very nice. Then we continued on to Nazareth, and when we got to Nazareth, we went to this place called Nazareth Village that Lisa had looked up. And I was so excited about this. Okay, so Nazareth Village, um, they have set it up like a first century village. And then they talk about the parables of Jesus um, and what it would have meant to the people at that time living um, in this village. And so they dress up in costume, they have their own currency that they use, um, so you can buy like food there and things like that. And the nice thing is it's only like 14 or 15 US dollars to do the tour. Um, and then you can also add like a meal on top of that. And so we wanted to get there first because I knew that that was the m main thing that I wanted to do that day. Um, but we get there and it's closed for the day. <laughs> and the next day is Sunday and they're closed then and then we flew out on Monday. So that was our only time to see it. And for that day they didn't have the normal tour set up. But come to find out, uh, they had a free event open to the public that evening. And because we were there in December, it was a Christmas event. And so we figured, all right, well, we can go on and see the other things and then come back to here um, in the evening. So then we drove on to the Sea of Galilee. And that was beautiful. It was yes. really relaxing. I don't know what it is about water, but it's like so relaxing just to be around water. So we got there and there's this little park along the edge of the Sea of Galilee. And we walked over to the beach, the rocky beach there, and just kind of sat on some rocks and read the Bible for a little bit. And then we saw these like weird little creatures, almost like big prairie dogs or groundhogs or something. Yeah. I don't know exactly what they were, but they were like all over the place. There were so scurrying many Scurrying around them. the bushes and stuff. So I got a couple of pictures. They were, they were hard to get because they were like hiding and as soon as they thought you saw them, they would like run away. Yeah. <laughs> they were you, fun. If you know what kind of animal it is, leave the comment in the description because I'm really curious at what it was. And it was so cool to be able to read the Bible, um, read life of Jesus, and especially the stories about Galilee while we were there looking at the Sea of Galilee. How lovely on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, good news. Announcing peace, proclaiming news of happiness, our God reigns, our God reigns. Now we drove on to Capernaum, which is the, the town of Jesus. A few ruins in there, a little statues, just another view of the Sea of Galilee there.
an American explorer found the ruins of Capernaum, dug it up, and then they thought, yeah, this is Capernaum based on the Bible, based on historical facts. Um, had the entry price been higher, I'd be like, meh, but with only like two dollars each, it was, it was good. So then we drove down along the coast of the Sea of Galilee down to Tiberias. It was kind of sad down in Tiberias in that little point that we went to for the on the edge of the water. There's a bunch of trash everywhere. You know, it's a little bit bigger city, but I just kind of had to see that it was just, nobody was picking that stuff up and it was just getting really junky in that one little area that we ended up going to anyways. There's still so some cool. beautiful angles of, of there in Tiberias. Got to enjoy the sunset there and then hop, hop back in the car to head back to Nazareth. Yeah, so then we go to the Nazareth village and it was so cool. So they had like several different like stations um, set up that you could go to kind of at any time. I mean, they had like some set like show times. The first place that we went to, um, they had um, some kids from the community that put on a dance. It was to like Christmas songs, um, secular and Christian, and it was just so cool to see. It was we very were, well done. It was very, very well done. So it felt like we were more part of the community and experiencing more local culture because I think we were some of the only tourists there. Um, and then after that we went up and then there was a um, choir group from Romania that was singing some Christmas hymns. And then as we walked out of there, they had Mary and Joseph um, with a donkey and you could follow Mary and Joseph with a donkey to go get your picture taken. And I remember just um, after just listening to the beautiful hymns and seeing Mary and Joseph with the donkey, just being so very, very thankful to God that we were able to experience it and be there in that moment. Because earlier that week, you know, Christmas was in my mind coming up and being away from family at Christmas time is hard. Yes, I had Peter, and Peter was just like, I'm in a new place at Christmas time. This is awesome. But I'm like, I want to be next to my family. And I even had, you know, quickly looked up like how much it would cost for just me to go to Pennsylvania and then meet Peter back up wherever he was, and it was too much. And, um, you know, anyways, but being able to have that experience around Christmas time and being in the area that Jesus was born, it was just so awesome. I was so thankful and will never forget that Christmas. They had a little food area where they you could exchange so your money, whatever you had for the local currency. It was like, you know, way back when, and then exchange that currency for some food. And it was really, really good food. It was so amazing. good. And so one of the things they did was they um, just fried up the the bread, and it was in an actual fire pit. And they had this like dome that they would put the dough on, and it like cooked it right there. And oh, it was so good. And then we had like Greek salad, um, and then we had some kind of drink. And I think then we had some kind of pastry. I don't know. We basically tried everything because they were just making local Israeli food um, and making it kind of like older style because it was supposed to be an older time. So it was just awesome. I loved it. Um, so then we went back to the same area that they had the kids dancing for the time of um, the Christmas story. That was being told um, by a narrator and they had like people acting it out. It's all in Hebrew, and which it should be because we're in their country. But he had asked something like, does anyone here speak English? Because many of them do um, speak English as well. And so we didn't raise our hand. But I think we, we looked around to see yes. if somebody else was going to raise their hand because if there were a few other people, then we'd you know, say, okay, us too. But if we were the only ones, we didn't want them to you know, have to translate in English for us. We're like, yeah, we know the Bible story. We'll just enjoy it. Just sit back, relax, and watch the show. Yeah, we don't need any special treatment. Um, and so it was funny, though, because the person that we had talked to in the office earlier that day that told us at the Nazareth 
um, village, the normal schedule was closed for that day, she was standing in the back of the audience and like she points to us like, no, they're English, they're English. And we're like, no, no, it's fine, like we know the story. And so then they spent the entire time going back and forth from um, Hebrew and then they translated to English for us and we felt- It was really smooth though, was, they, did, yeah. they did it so well. Yeah. A great performance. We felt very honored that they did that, but we also were hoping that it didn't take away um, the Christmas story from the other uh, people that were in attendance there. So, um, but yeah, it was, it was really nice. Everyone was so friendly there. Um, I say that that was probably our best experience in Israel um, when we were there. It was just- One of our favorite things for sure. Yeah. Most memorable. Then we went up to this little tent where they ha were doing a quiz, a Bible quiz, and Lisa's dad like always writes a Christmas Bible quiz. So it's something every, that she was yeah. really craving to be able to do. Yes, because every year my dad does this um, Bible quiz and it's usually on something specific, either like um, the, the prophecies that have to do with the Bible time or like what the angels said or like the different characters what they said and it always is really difficult. You think you know the Bible story until, until you take one of my dad's quizzes. Thanking God that like I got to take a Bible quiz that year. That was cool. And I remember one of the questions, what was Joseph, um, Jesus' father's occupation? A couple of the you know options to choose from was carpentry and then tecton. And we're like, carpentry, of course. I know this answer, it's carpenter. Wrong. <laughs> so then he's like, tecton, and we're like, well, what is that? And he's like, so a tecton is, basically means builder. So it means, yes, they worked with wood, like carpentry, but they also worked with stone because back in the, in the day, a lot of the house was built with stone so that, you know, the bottom was stone and then like maybe the roof was, you know, with wood. So, you know, He's like, you know, that just makes the parables and the things that Jesus talked about, like, you know, house built on the sand versus house built on the rock and different things like that took on a whole new meaning because, you know, Jesus knew what he was talking about because he was a builder. He worked with those things. Um, and, you know, with Peter, um, he gave him that name, which means rock. And then Jesus said, I will build this church upon this rock. And so again, stone, very eye-opening. And so that the guy that they gave the quiz, uh, we were able to talk with him afterwards. And it was just so amazing to hear um, his stories. He was so passionate about the Bible, um, passionate about what the Bible meant at that time and then what it means today. And it was just awesome. Yeah, but it was really cool. You know, this whole time, in all the movies and stuff that portray Jesus, you know, you, Pretty much all of them, I think, portray him as like, you know, working with furniture basically, right? Building chairs, bench, table, stuff like that. Which he probably, you know, maybe did, but you know, did more than that, like building houses type things. So more like a general contractor almost. So anyway, just kinda new perspective. It was cool. It was pretty cool. I definitely definitely want to um, go back and go to the Nazareth village when they actually have the parable tour. Um, as regularly scheduled. So if you, if you can time it just right and maybe go there when they have like one day, like a couple of days before they switch over to, to the Christmas yeah. thing and then also be able to do the Christmas village, that'd be pretty cool to be able to capture both. If yes. you can time it that way, if the scheduling works out, that would be really cool to get to do yes. both Yes, and so they would have had it the day before, but that's when we were exploring Jerusalem. And then we got a hotel that evening in Nazareth and the strange thing was like, it was like this warehouse and we like are walking through this dimly lit warehouse, like upstairs. I'm like, where are we going? And then it opens up to this huge room, but it was just kind of an odd setup. Yeah, it probably could have been like two or three different rooms in there. Uh, it was just really spacious and not filled with a whole lot of stuff, but yes. hey, it was great. Great nice night's rest. And in the next video, we head on south to go to the Dead Sea and a few other things. So see that in the next video. See ya.